You're listening to The Culture Report, voice of Russia, America's weekly look into the world of arts, culture, and history. I'm your host, Rob Sachs. Tulane Russian Studies professor William Brumfield has traveled extensively throughout Russia, documenting cities and towns often overlooked by the casual traveler. Today, he takes us to a small town 250 miles southeast of Moscow, which is best known as the place where Leo Tolstoy spent his final days. William Brumfield joins us now. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us about this town. It's uh, Astapova. Astapova uh, is the name of it. comes from uh, the ancient name Ostap, uh, pronounced Astapova. And um, it uh, was fated to become the center of world attention in uh, November uh, 1910 uh, when the great writer Leo Tolstoy uh, became ill. Um, during a trip in which he was essentially running away from home. A very tragic story. And then how did he wind up in Astapova? Well, it was uh, on the way to... He was headed south with his daughter and his private physician, his daughter Alexandra. Um, And um, uh, he was feeling so poorly, and he was riding in a third-class car, Tolstoy at that time had uh, a, a very strong feeling against uh, luxury, against privileges. So they were riding in a, a very uncomfortable uh, train car, and um, he uh, he was already 82 years old, not in good health, uh, and apparently contracted a form of pneumonia and a rising temperature. Uh, losing consciousness, so his uh, daughter and the doctor said, we've got to get off at the next station. The next station was Astapova. So um, he, he plunks down in this small town, only about 8,000 people living there now. How big was it then? Oh, it was smaller then. But the railroad station was actually, quite, as I say in my article, it was actually quite a bit larger than people seemed to think. Uh, it was recently developed, and uh, so it, was, and it had a railway school next to it and a church. And there were several buildings there, and uh, one of them, a small uh, one-story house, a wooden house, uh, used by the station master, um, who, interestingly enough, was of Latvian origin, uh, was a Lutheran, uh, not a Russian Orthodox. Uh, he, like so many Russians, uh, that is, people who lived in the Russian Empire, um, uh, had enormous reverence and respect for Leo Tolstoy. It's hard to imagine today. Of course, everybody understands how great he was as a writer, but at that time, he was really like a prophet. Uh, and so the station master immediately vacated uh, the largest room, in fact, two rooms, in his own house. He was there with his wife and three children. Um, and he gave this space over to Tolstoy, made the bed for him, and um, uh, the writer spent his last week there, seven days. He arrived on October the 31st, 1910. And remember, Russia was still on the old calendar in those days, which was uh, 13 days behind the calendar uh, used in the West. Uh, they were still on the Julian calendar. Uh, the rest of the world was on the Gregorian calendar. Uh, Russia changed to the Gregorian calendar in February 1918 after the Bolshevik Revolution. But in those days, they were 13 days behind the rest of the world. So uh, he arrived on October the 31st by their calendar, uh, and he uh, passed away uh, on November the 7th, which would be November the 20th by our calendar. So uh, my article came out on the 22nd, uh, two days after the anniversary of his death. Uh, but in any event, the station master uh, made the room available, and uh, uh, over the next week, over the next seven days, uh, Tolstoy's uh, health fluctuated. He was conscious for most of that period, uh, and the people closest to him were very concerned to preserve him from undue stress. Um, and let's and, remember, he is fleeing from his wife. That's right. That's right. Uh, who was seen as the uh, source um, and repre- uh, representative of those values that uh, Tolstoy no longer um, subscribed to. In other words, uh, uh, material um, uh, prosperity uh, for the family. She saw it her duty to make sure the family had uh, adequate means. 
Uh, Tolstoy, on the other hand, wanted essentially to give away his property. And the, the problem was um, that uh, there were uh, other people who got involved in all of this. And they were interested in Tolstoy as the great moral figure. Uh, they were not interested um, so much in the family. Uh, they thought Tolstoy's duty was larger than that. And uh, Tolstoy himself uh, subscribed to that notion that something had to be do, uh, done about the injustices in the world. So there was this tragic uh, division uh, within the family, and um, uh, Tolstoy finally felt he became, you might say, something of a paranoid. He thought his wife was going through his papers and this, that, and the other. Uh, they were really estranged. Um, and so he finally took, uh, in the middle of the night, uh, took this decision on October the 28th uh, that he was going to leave. It was a very strange and harrowing story. In the middle of the night, they get up, and uh, he goes through the woods to get to the train station. He's just got his doctor, and his doctor should have recommended against this. But his doctor also believed in Tolstoy, the great prophet. So um, there were many uh, issues that intersected here, and uh, Tolstoy was, you might almost say, caught in uh, all of these motives that took him out of the one place where he should have stayed for his health. And so he's in a stop of a, and it's like a god descending on this small town where the townspeople going nuts when they saw, oh my gosh, the most famous person is here. Well, you have to remember, there wasn't much there apart from the station. There was a village about five kilometers away, but uh, the station um, was uh, sort of its own little bubble. Uh, So there there weren't many people there, but uh, remember the rail line uh, and the telegraph line uh, went throughout the world. It, it, this is a, a very modern phenomenon, you might say, uh, where publicity uh, spreads like wildfire because of the telegraph. There was a telegraph station there. It was, after all, on the rail line, uh, and every rail station was connected with a telegraph. And from there, you essentially could go around the world. Um, and that, indeed, is what happened uh, because Tolstoy was such an enormously regarded figure uh, throughout the world. After all, Mahatma Gandhi uh, uh, knew of him uh, in South Africa. At that time, Gandhi was living there. Everyone knew of Tolstoy, um, not just as a writer, but as the moral figure. So what uh, happened to him was of interest throughout the world. So it became uh, a sensation. Uh, that's the word I use in the article, um, and I think it's appropriate. It became a news item. Uh, and therefore, people flocked to the station from all over. There were reporters, uh, of course, um, uh, medical team from Moscow, uh, people who um, were a part of the Tolstoyan group, uh, so that um, hundreds of people ultimately um, descended. His own family, his wife, arrived um, on November the 2nd. And uh, they just um, uh, put the rail car off on a siding, so his wife and uh, the children who came with her lived in that rail car for the week. His wife was not allowed to see Tolstoy uh, until he was already in a coma. Mm. Uh, That would have been uh, on uh, November the 7th. He died at 6.05 in the morning, November the 7th. Uh, So she was allowed in the room uh, when he was no longer conscious. Uh, it was a desperate struggle. So you traveled to Estapava recently, and uh, there's pictures that you posted along with your article. Uh, what's the place like now? What's it like to, to go to this town that was a worldwide sensation for that one week uh, over 100 years ago? Uh, it's a quiet agricultural community. The uh, station is very carefully maintained as a national museum by the Tolstoy Museum that's headquartered in Moscow. Because Tolstoy had a house in Moscow, and that's uh, the uh, Tolstoy Museum in Moscow. And so this place is uh, uh, administered by the Tolstoy Museum in Moscow. So it's beautifully maintained. But the buildings right around it are still used. The first aid point is still used as a pharmacy. They're preserved, but they're still used. Uh, The church has been restored, uh, which was a part of the railway school. 
Um, and uh, the rest of the uh, the area around there serves the agricultural community. This is in the Lipetsk area, so it's a very rich country, uh, known for its grain and its, uh, especially its apples, uh, apple orchards, uh, some of the largest in Russia. Uh, so it's a uh, rather prosperous agricultural community. I guess you'd compare it to some place like Iowa. Um, and therefore, it's uh, it's a small place. The railroad it still serves freight traffic. There's not much passenger traffic that goes through there. Uh, but um, uh, the the museum is uh, extremely well maintained. And you know, the room where Tolstoy died was preserved by the station master uh, immediately, uh, and that has uh, never changed. When the Bolsheviks came to power, they preserved it. Uh, and so has every institution since then. Uh, but it was the initiative of the station master, I- Ivan Azolin, uh, of Latvian origin. He didn't even have any icons in the house uh, because he was a uh, Lutheran. Uh, and of course, that suited Tolstoy because Tolstoy was uh, opposed to uh, ornate religious displays. Uh, but there are a number of curious uh, facts about this. But Azolin decided this will be a shrine. For all humanity, uh, and uh, it, nothing shall be touched. So his family never moved back into those rooms, and those rooms are today as they were a um, hundred and three years ago. It's interesting because I know we've talked in the past about how Russia preserved its, its history and how the various different um, iterations of government have preserved history. Uh, you talk about the czarist past and. You know, when the communists came in, uh, they, they didn't necessarily want to talk about that. Right. Um, but it seems like Tolstoy has transcended um, politics in that every iteration of government since his death wanted to preserve uh, this, this heritage site. You're absolutely right. Um, uh, there are still some controversial issues. Uh, Tolstoy was never reconciled with the church. Uh, he died without the benefit of last rites. Um, even though his sister was um, uh, living in a convent, he visited her shortly before uh, he got on that uh, fateful train um, uh, that uh, eventually took him to Astapova. So there were rumors that he wanted to be reconciled, but he never was. And apparently one of his descendants recently, and I, I just got this from reading uh, the Russian press, uh, had asked that the church reconsider the excommunication. Um, and uh, the church position is that there is no reason to reconsider it because Tolstoy never renounced uh, his views attacking certain basic principles of the church. The church also says that this is not uh, excommunication is not an anathema. It's not a curse. Uh, it's just uh, simply an acknowledgement that the person no longer shares uh, the um, uh, uh, the communion uh, with uh, with the church. So um, it's, it's a very difficult issue to this day, uh, the role of the church in social justice, all of these issues that came into play a century ago, and uh, there's, there's no clear way of resolving it, no matter how, how much people would like to resolve them. Uh, it seems that the, the parties are fixed in their positions. Uh, so um, there are these issues that continue, but above all of this, uh, you're right. Uh, that, uh, the Russians have never lost this enormous uh, regard and respect and love uh, for a Tolstoy in all of his complexity. So is Astapova then a, a part of the pilgrimage of, of tracing the steps of Tolstoy's life? Does it still receive tourists and people who are interested in, in knowing about Tolstoy's final days? Yes, and uh, this is not to say that there are tour buses uh, lined up around the place. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that there is sort of a normal life there. But you go there and look at the guest book, and what struck me is how many Tolstoys there were, because uh, they live all over the world now. Certain members of the family uh, emigrated uh, after the revolution to the United States. Uh, There was a famous community established in New York by uh, Alexandra Tolstoy. So uh, there are Tolstoy still living in Europe, and uh, needless to say, his direct descendants living in Russia. He and his wife had 13 children, eight of whom survived to adulthood. 
so you can imagine uh, that there are a great number of progeny, of uh, direct descendants from the Tolstoy family. And one could just turn over the pages of the guest book, page after page, and uh, see how they have visited this site. Uh, that in itself is, I think, uh, an extraordinary thing. So 250 miles southeast of Moscow, is it worth the day trip? Uh, well, the nearest uh, passenger station from Moscow, it's an overnight train, is to uh, Yelitz, the town of Yelitz. Uh, you don't have to go all the way to the regional capital, Lipetsk. You can get off in Yelitz. Yelitz itself is a, it's a charming town, uh, also associated with Russian literature. Uh, and from there, you can get a small, a very small local train. Um, sometimes it's, it's actually only one car, and <laughs> it will sort of make the uh, journey over to and the stop at uh, Astapova, which, by the way, today is called Lev Tolstoy. In 1918, Astapova was formally renamed after the writer. So the town itself, everybody um, informally calls it Astapova, and people remember it as Astapova, but the official name is uh, Lev Tolstoy, uh, the Russian form for Leo Tolstoy. Uh, so uh, you can you can get uh, a train or hire a car, uh, get that little uh, shuttle train, uh, which I think leaves once a day from Yelets. And Yelets itself is a, a very pleasant provincial town of about 100,000 people, uh, preserving its historical district. So there's quite a lot to see there. It's an overnight train from Moscow. Uh, no need to rush. But these things can be planned in advance, and um, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's worth the trip. Um, but I don't want to uh, uh, give an impression that there's something else to see besides the Tolstoy. This is a shrine to Tolstoy. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming on and telling us the story of Tolstoy's last days and what it's like to visit Astapova now, I guess, Lev Tolstoy. What was it called again? The, the Lev Tolstoy. Lev Tolstoy, Tolstoy the, is the, the town. official name, but everyone would know it uh, by the name that the world knew in November 1910, Astapova. That is Tulane Russian Studies Professor William Brumfield. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to The Culture Report, Voice of Russia, America's weekly look into the world of arts, culture, and history. To hear this story and past stories on The Culture Report, check out The Culture Report page at voicerussia.com. Again, that's all one word, voicerussia.com. Until next week, I'm Rob Sachs.